Hey there everybody and welcome to the channel, I'm your host Rama, and in today's video I'll be showcasing every single Amani Tech vehicle that has been added into Grand Theft Auto Online. There's actually quite a few when you take a look at all of them, it's actually impressive how many Rockstar has added and I can guarantee that with future updates there are going to be more to come. Amani Tech vehicles are the best of both worlds. Instead of being a slower armored vehicle like the Insurgent or even the Karuma which is kind kinda sporty but really isn't that fast, Amani Tech vehicles feature the same maneuverability, top speed and handling that a lot of normal sporty supercars feature depending on the class you're looking at, but they also feature incredible armor and even if you can hit them with missiles because you can't lock onto them, you still have to hit them upwards of 12 times to blow them up. Actually really, really dang impressive. In today's video I'm not necessarily going to be talking about the survivability of these vehicles, I'm going to be talking more about their looks, their overall strengths, weaknesses, and disadvantages when it comes to handling and maneuverability, and which ones I think are better bangs for the buck. So let's start off at the end over here. We've got the Buffaloes, both of them. Starting off, we've got the Buffalo STX, which is honestly an amazing car. First of all, it's a four-door, which means that if you are planning on doing heists or anything that involves four people or more than two, this is a really good vehicle. Not only that, but it features bulletproof glass at least to a certain extent, which is something that you won't find, for example, on a lot of the other new vehicles like the Buffalo EVX or the Grotti Itali GTO or the Anis 300R or the Virtue. So a lot of the newer Amani Tech vehicles do not feature semi-bulletproof glass that can survive a little bit of ammo before it does get broken into. It may not seem like a huge advantage to have glass that is somewhat bullet resistant, but it's nice, especially if you're in a public lobby, if somebody just wants to spray and pray at you really quick, that little bit of cover can definitely save you from being headshot, so I actually really like the bulletproof glass, especially when you have four people in your vehicle, there's a lot higher of a chance if you're in a vehicle like the Buffalo EVX that somebody can just spray and pray and hit one of the people in the car, compared to having all bulletproof glass around the entire vehicle. Now, I thought I'd start off showcasing the cars that do feature this semi-bulletproof glass. So we have the Buffalo STX, and moving on to the next one, we have the Dubachi Champion, which as you can see features the exact same glass. Surprisingly, the Monstrosity features semi-bulletproof glass. This does not. The Patriot Mill Spec does feature semi-bulletproof glass, although not amazing. This vehicle's not very fast, and it's got big ol' windows, which means it's pretty easy to shoot through them once you get a pretty easy shot on somebody. Next up we have the DD that features it, we got the Granger 3600, the Greenwood does not feature it, and finally we have the Jubilee. So about half of the vehicles in this list are somewhat bulletproof glass and the other half are not. Now to be fair, the vehicles that do feature this semi-bulletproof glass have the downside of not surviving as many RPGs and sticky bombs, but at the other side of the argument, who's gonna sit still and let somebody shoot six RPGs? G's at your vehicle, because homing rounds do not count the same explosion damage as RPGs. So if you're getting hit by homing missiles, all of these vehicles can survive 12. If you're getting hit by RPGs, they can only survive 6, where the ones that have non-bulletproof glass can survive upwards of 10 to 12 RPGs. So it really depends on what you're dealing with. The only vehicle here that cannot survive more than even one explosion is the Monstrosity. The Monstrosity is a pretty sick vehicle, but unfortunately it does not feature that capability. All it features is a missile lock-on jammer and that semi-bulletproof glass. But I will say on the upside, the monstrosity has a fully bulletproof back and side pane, so it's only the front panels and the side panels you have to worry about on the front driver's seat, which is actually not bad. If there's anybody behind you, they have no chance of cutting through the back of the vehicle, but I think I'd still rather choose the uh, explosion. Now that that's all out of the way, let's talk about the price tags, the strengths, weaknesses, weaknesses and all the advantages each of these vehicles hold over each other and which ones I think are good deals and which ones you should stay very, very far away from. Starting off at the beginning of the pack, we have the Buffalo STX coming in at a price tag of $2.15 million. Not the cheapest vehicle, but to be fair, it's not even close to the most expensive vehicle on this list. And I'd actually be willing to say this is the most well-rounded vehicle out of every vehicle here. First of all, as I showcased, it features that semi-bullet 
bulletproof glass, which is really nice. That means if you have four people in the car, they're not all gonna die. It has the missile lock-on jammer like every other vehicle. It can survive a decent chunk of missiles, and it's decently fast, coming in at a top speed of 126 miles per hour. So it's got speed, it's got actually pretty decent lap time for the muscles class, and it's got great defensive capabilities. Overall, absolute S tier when it comes to the Imani Tech builds. Next up, we have the Buffalo EVX, and I'm actually quite a big fan of this car. I didn't expect to like the first electric muscle added into the game, but I think the vehicle looks really nice, especially with the livery options Rockstar has given it, and it's actually not a bad vehicle. First of all, it's a very similar price tag of $2.1 million. It's a little bit slower, coming in at a top speed of 118, but what it does lack in top speed, it features much, much better handling for how it is. Not to mention, if you're playing on next generation consoles, this can get an HSW upgrade going quite a bit faster. So it's really just a bit slower if you're on PC for me. It's still a pretty good car though. It doesn't seat four people, and overall it is kind of a worse Buffalo STX, but I still think it's a cool looking car, and it's not a terrible deal for the price tag. Next up, we have the fastest vehicle in the list, at least for me, which is the Itali Stinger TT. This comes in at a price tag of 2.4 4 mil, pretty close to the rest so far. It has a top speed of 132 miles per hour. That is incredibly fast. That is crazy speed, especially for this only being a sports car. I actually think it looks really, really nice. It's got some decent upgrades, good liveries. Overall, I'm a pretty big fan of the vehicle and the fact that it's a full-fledged Imani Tech car, it is really, really cool. So if you're going strictly for speed and survivability, this is the vehicle you're going to be going for because it's definitely going to be getting you there the fastest. And I also think it has an HSW upgrade again if you're on the next generation consoles. Next up, we have the Anus 300R. This is actually one of my favorite looking vehicles because it's based off the Nissan Z, which is actually a car I really want to get in real life. It just looks amazing. Unfortunately, there's nothing really special about it. It's pretty expensive at $2 million for a pretty lackluster speed of only 120 miles per hour. To be honest, you're going to get a lot more when it comes to the TT, because the Stinger TT is literally better in every way, handling top speed, and it's got the same survivability aspect, so I would only suggest to buy the 300R if you really like the way it looks, which I personally do, so if you're a person that likes vehicles looks over performance, definitely pick up the 300R. Next up, we have my personal favorite in the entire list, which is the Ocelot Virtue. First of all, this vehicle is technically free. If you complete the first and last dose missions upon completion, you will get this vehicle as a free gift. It's decently fast at a top speed of 119.25 miles per hour. And I have to say, this is one of the nicest looking supercars Rockstar's put into the game in a very long time. It's got some fantastic livery options and I'm just all over this vehicle. All my friends that have gotten it too absolutely love it. It's super fun to drive due to the crazy acceleration it features. It's just a great car, so pick it up if you haven't by completing those missions. Now, if you don't want to do the missions, yeah, it's going to be quite expensive, around $3 million. But that's still not nearly as expensive as the Dubachi Champion, which in one of the later updates was changed on price tag from what it was like 2.4 mil to $3.75 million. Yeah, it's a little ridiculous if you want my opinion. This is not worth it. It's just not worth it. Especially when you can get the Buffalo STX for one and a half million dollars cheaper with a higher top speed and better lap time. Like, what? Yeah, the Champion is just, it's a waste of money at this point. It's a cool looking car, and it is one of the only supers if you don't count the Virtue, but still... It's just not worth the price. It only features a top speed of 125, and it's really not that great on lap time either. If Rockstar wants this vehicle to be as expensive as they're asking it to be, they definitely need to make it a lot more competitive in the Supers class, especially in performance. Next up, we have... The problem with the monstrosity is it's not really an Imani Tech vehicle. It does feature the missile lock-on jammer, and it does feature some protection, but... It doesn't have any missile survivability, which is a big downside. However, I actually really, really like the monstrosity. First of all, it's pretty cheap, 1.5 mil, and it features a top speed not too bad for an off-road vehicle at 110 miles per hour. Honestly, this is an absolute blast to drive. This is one of my favorite vehicles Rockstar's hat 
added into the game in probably a year or so. It's just an incredibly fun vehicle. I would rate my enjoyment as much on this vehicle as the Virtue, and that's saying a lot. I really enjoy this vehicle. So even though it doesn't feature as much protection, I'd still suggest to pick it up. It's fun. It's just an all-round blast to drive. So uh, pick up the monstrosity. Next up, we have the Obey Ominous EGT, which is the most hardy out of all the vehicles here. It can survive 12 RPG and sticky bombs, which is even two more than vehicles like the Virtue and the Buffalo EVX, which is absolutely crazy when you think about it. However, the downside is that it's not very fast, only going at a top speed of 112 miles per hour. But at $1.8 million, it's really not that bad of a deal, especially because it is electric and it does seat four people. It's kind of got a lot of upsides going for it. So I actually would say that this is definitely one of the best choices if you want to survive the longest, you want to seat four people, and you want a pretty good all-round sports car. It's not a bad vehicle at all. And I actually think it looks really, really nice. I think it's based off the Audi e-tron in real life, which is a super nice looking vehicle as well. So yeah, not a bad car. Next up, we have a vehicle that gets a lot more hype than I personally believe it deserves, which is the Patriot mil spec. It's slow. It features a top speed, if I can find it, of 96 miles per hour. And it's a price tag of 1.7 mil. I don't really understand the advantage of this vehicle, again, when the Buffalo SCX exists, which is faster by literally 30 miles per hour. It has the same armor, same survivability, it's just an all-round better vehicle. I mean, it's a bit more expensive, but it's still gonna be better for everything cost of performance. I mean, cool, it's an off-roader, but the problem I have with the Patriot mil spec is it's actually not that good at off-roading. It's really low to the ground for an off-roader, which is rather disappointing. Honestly, the Monstrosity has better ground clearance than the mil spec because of the fact it's got these little side fenders here, the side steps. It's just not a great off-roader, to be completely honest, which is what I wanted it to be, so I'm very disappointed with the mil spec. It's definitely not worth the price. Then we've got the Deity. It's not even really worth going over. It comes at a price tag of around $1.8 million, top speed of 117. I mean, it's not bad for what it is. It's just a sports car that you can seat four people in. Eh. I mean, I just wouldn't suggest to buy it. The Granger used to be a really good deal because of the fact that it was a four-seater. It was honestly pretty fun to mess around with, especially smashing cars off the road. But Rockstar increased the price tag. It's now over $2 million. And it's just not worth $2 million for this vehicle. Just the same problem with the Patriot mil spec. Big windows that you can very easily shoot the occupants in. And it's not very fast. Doesn't even go over 100 miles per hour. It's just not worth it. The Greenwood is definitely the worst of all the vehicles here, in my opinion. The Greenwood is the cheapest, to be fair. Only at a price tag of 1.5 mil. But there's a reason why, and that's because, first of all, it doesn't feature any bulletproof protection, and it also features some of the worst missile survivability. It's not that pretty of a car, and it features really bad overall handling. So, uh, yeah, the Greenwood's just a bad car. It doesn't look nice, it doesn't handle well, it's decently fast at 118, but at that point, just buy the Buffalo EVX, it's just a better car. And finally, we have actually a really good one. I think that the Jubilee is a super underrated vehicle. The Jubilee is cheap. Well, for what it is, it's one of the cheapest at $1.65 million. And the Jubilee features the semi-bulletproof glass, but also can survive up to 12 homing missiles, which is very nice. The Jubilee also features a top speed of 117 miles per hour, which is not too bad. It's all-wheel drive, it's a four-seater, and it's just literally a better Granger at this point. So I actually really like the Jubilee. It's a great car for the price, and... Out of all the vehicles here, if I were to rank them in maybe like the top three or four, I would say that number one is easily, easily the Buffalo STX because of all the capabilities it features. Number two goes to the Virtue. It's just such a nice car. The fact that it's free, all those things, absolutely fantastic. Number three is going to go to the Jubilee just because of the fact that it's a four-door. It's kind of like the STX, but it's got a bit more survivability when it comes to off-roading. It's all-wheel drive, so you're not going to lose grip. It's a lot better for all-terrain type capabilities, so the Jubilee's really good, especially for the price tag. Um, and then if you were to rank, like, number four, I'd probably rank the EGT in there. I'd probably put the Stinger TT. The rest of the vehicles are all pretty self-explanatory. So, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you'd like to see more like it, please consider smashing that subscribe button down below. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.